I don't have an inductance meter or a capacitive meter, so I found a really great way of measuring capacitance and inductance without requiring an inductance meter. All you'll need is a function generator, a component with a known value, and the equation for determining the resonant frequency. So that equation is the resonant frequency is equal to the reciprocal of 2 pi times the square root of LC. And if you rework that, it's quite easy to find the unknown variable. So if you're solving for C, or if you're solving for L, it's quite, quite simple. So we will do that, but first I wanna show you the circuit. Okay, here's the circuit. Here's the function generator, which can generate any frequency you would like within a certain range. And that goes over here, comes up here, goes to this tank circuit, which is just a, an inductor and a capacitor in parallel. Now, one of these is known and one of these is not known. That depends on what you're looking at. If you have a capacitor that you wanna know the value of, you need an inductor with a known value. If you wanna find a, an inductor, with an unknown value, you need to have a capacitor with a known value. Anyway, so you would place your oscilloscope across the top of the tank circuit and the bottom of the tank circuit. And before you get back to the negative of the function generator, you want to place a resistor. I use a 1k ohm resistor, that's just out of habit. I like to use 1k ohm resistors. You can use any resistor you would like. All right, so that's the circuit. All right, so I'm gonna use this technique to measure the inductance of this inductor. This inductor does have a known value, but I've covered up the label, so I don't know what it is, and it's very similar in diameter to these other three, so it could be anything. So I'm just gonna place it in parallel with the capacitor in the tank circuit. And this capacitor is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. All right, there we go. And I've already placed my oscilloscope leads across the tank circuit. So this is the ground connection and this is the positive connection. My function generator is isolated from ground so this ground will not short out the resistor, so we're fine. And this is the fun part. We go over to our oscilloscope and we look at the voltage. Okay, so here's the signal across the tank circuit, and this knob here adjusts the frequency. So if I turn the frequency down, the amplitude is pretty low, and if I turn it up to the maximum, the amplitude goes low again. So what I want to do is find that point where the amplitude is highest. So right about there. Now, what I like to do is zoom in on the voltage. and increase the or decrease the sampling rate so I have a nice distinct line of where the voltage is so now I can touch this up and really get a nice precise measurement of where the voltage peaks out so right there is where the voltage peaks out now I just want to zoom back out and determine the frequency so we have three, three, so right around 6.2 divisions and we are at 10 microseconds per division. So then we would just multiply the number of divisions by the time base, which is 10 microseconds. So that's 62 microseconds. Now you would reciprocate that and you would get your frequency, which is 16.13 kilohertz. All right, so we have found the frequency and we know C because it's labeled on the component and now we just need to solve for L. So I'm going to rework this circuit or rework this formula and we can determine what L is. And here's the formula to solve for L. And if you were to solve for C, all you need to do is switch these two variables and you would just divide this by L to find C. So it's quite simple to swap the two. All right, now I'm gonna calculate this out and we'll see what the value of L is. Oh, 
Okay, so according to my calculations, the value of the inductor is going to be 9.7 millihenries. So let me write that down. Okay, so let's pull this guy out of the circuit and uncover its value. And would you look at that? It's right at 10 millihenries according to their label. So I was off by 0.3 if this is exactly 10 millihenries. So the technique works, and I hope this was really helpful to you guys. And if you have any questions or if you want me to somehow get you the formulas, whatever the case may be, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. Bye.